On this week's episode, I am in the desert in 103 degree temperature at Vasquez Rocks, the famous Vasquez Rocks, to bring you the timeline of the Bill and Ted series. Hopefully the third entry of which we will be out in about a week or so, hopefully very, very soon. I guess we'll see if it doesn't get delayed again. And we're going to check out the timeline of a series that bounces around in time and hopefully it'll make quite a bit of sense because, I mean, it's a lightweight comedy, so it's bound to make sense, right? Now, things got non-heinous back in 1989 with Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. It kicks off with one of the greatest comedians of all time telling us that he's from the year 2688 and the future is a totally excellent utopia, but there's something that he has to go back in time to fix. That fix is the Wild Stallions, a band consisting of John Wick and Ghost Dude. Boo, dude! We're now in San Dimas in 1988, 700 years and Rufus has passed, and they're about to flunk their history class, which would be totally bogus, unless they get an A plus on their report for UN Jefferson. Ted's dad wants to send him to military school, while Bill's dad is remarried to a much younger woman, Missy. Rufus arrives with a future Bill and Ted who remind Ted to wind his watch and they travel through time in a phone booth. Hmm, wonder where they get that idea from. Oh, and for my younger viewers, this is a phone booth. It, it's where you would have to go when you would make a phone call when you were out and about before cell phones. They learn an important rule and that's that the clock still moves forward when they're gone. So if an hour passes while they travel in time, an hour passes in their own time, which just makes no sense at all. They have a time machine that will take them to any time that they want. They could just set it to go to one minute after they left. They go to 1805, 1879, 410 BC, and the 15th century, where they meet some bodacious princesses. And then to the future, where they find out that their music is instrumental in creating world peace and a totally excellent, perfect future. They bounce to 1901, 1810, 1429, 1209, and 1863 to collect various historical dudes. They end up back at the Circle K and events are the same, which would indicate that this is a linear timeline, as in the time stream cannot be altered. If that's true, then Rufus coming back in time was always a part of the events, and him completing the task was more of an obligation than a mission, since events have always happened this way. They round up Beethoven, Socrates, Genghis Khan, Froude, Lincoln, Joan of Arc, and Billy the Kid, as well as Napoleon, and everyone creates chaos at the mall and get arrested. Also, never forget, they save the historical dudes using time travel, although I'm not sure how this trash can thing works. How, how did they set this up ahead of time and have it dropped when they did? They would have had to be there like all day. Did nobody see a trash can just hanging from the ceiling? They give their big report. Party on, dudes! Get an A+, and Rufus hooks them up with the princesses. That kind of has to be more proof towards a linear timeline, as he wouldn't be able to take them away from their time if it would have changed history. So I guess they were always taken at that point? Time travel timelines are totally hard, dude. A sequel arrived two years later in 1991 with Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, which was supposed to be titled Bill and Ted Go to Hell. Bad Guy Denomalous is here, and fun fact, his name is the name of one of the writers, Ed Solomon, spelled backwards. He says that Bill and Ted are at their second crucial turning point and he's intent on stopping them. The future is pretty distant, as this school was established in 2425, and Rufus is back and he's brought Edison, Bach, and James Martin. Station! Denami plans to go back to change history with the help of Bill and Ted robots, and the fact that he thinks that it's possible insinuates that the timeline is not linear and can be changed. The boys are back, as are the princesses, although they've been recast, and Ted says they're celebrating their fifth year in the present, so I guess it's actually 1993 now. Pam Greer is here with awesome 80s hair, even though it's the 90s. Ted's dad is also back, as is Missy, and she's divorced Bill's dad and married Ted's. The boys propose, and the evil Bill and Ted arrive and take them to Vasquez Rocks and kill them. 
They become ghosts and meet the Demon Knight. I mean the Grim Reaper. They have a few ghost adventures until Missy banishes them and they end up in hell and meet the devil and face their biggest nightmares. And then they have to challenge death to games in order to return to life. He takes them to heaven to find help and they meet God who introduces them to Station who appears to be the only non-human in heaven for some reason. They return to Earth and Mega Station builds Robot Bill and Ted and head to a face-off at the Battle of the Bands. Primus is playing, so, I mean, c come on. I mean, it's, it's Primus. H how are you winning a battle of the bands against them? There's a showdown as the good robots quickly destroy the evil versions, and Anomalous shows up and televises the battle of the bands to the entire world. They use time travel to defeat him, and Ms. Wardrobe is revealed to be Rufus in disguise, but Bill and Ted realize that they don't have the skills to play properly, so they use the booth to time travel to have an intense 16 months of guitar training in which they got married and had babies and then... Wait, wait, wait. In the first movie, they established that time continues forward when you time travel. How were Bill and Ted able to travel for 16 months and return to the same point in time? I guess this is actually a future version of themselves that went back to show up just for this point, while the present day Bill and Ted are somewhere else right now practicing? That whole conceit from the first movie just makes no sense. They then win the battle and unite the world. So is this a linear timeline? Could Denomalous have changed things? I think the answer is no. I think this is the, always the way that things happen, which makes it questionable why Denomalous would try, unless he studied history. And let's face it, history from 400 years ago isn't going to have all the details. A, a newspaper at the ending has a date of 2001 on it, which seems to be about the Battle of the Bands, so, although that must be a misprint. And there's another one from 2691, so I guess print media must make a comeback at some point here. There's another newspaper date of 1991? I, I, think, I think the dates are meaningless since things about the present seem to be dated 2691 and Missy gets married to Denomalous in 1991, so just forget these dates. Ted says it's five years later, and a screenwriter in an interview stated the movie is five years later, and from all these papers, it looks like they're uniting the world. So now, in 2020... Hopefully coming soon, I mean the release date changes more than lockdown protocols. We finally get a new chapter with Bill and Ted face the music. The trailer tells us that it's been 25 years since they played in front of the world, so I guess it's... 2018? Or the future lady is just approximating and Bill and Ted have yet to write the song that creates the peaceful future, so they try to go to the future to steal the song from themselves. They have daughters named Billy and Thea, even though they introduced them as Little Bill and Little Ted in the last one, which insinuated that they were boys, but I guess that they were just nicknames. There's also some great Bill and Ted comic books out there, including a Marvel Comics adaptation of the second movie, which is based on the script and features scenes not in the movie and a slightly different ending where Denomalous dies and goes to hell. This was followed up by a short-lived ongoing series written and drawn by the awesome Evan Dorkin, creator of the Milk and Cheese comic. It picks up where the movie leaves off and is pretty great. There was also another series in 2015 from Boom Comics from Brian Lynch, there was also an animated series back in 1990 that lasted for two seasons and featured the boys in high school constantly trying to graduate and using Rufus's help to go through time to complete assignments. Everyone from the film voiced their characters for the first season but were recast for the second which changed animation studios as well. There was also a very short-lived live action series back in 1992 that debuted after the animated version was cancelled and came out after Bogus Journey. It's very, very poorly regarded, and Alex Winter himself was quoted on Arsenio Hall as saying the show stinks. Keep in mind he said this while the show was on the air. There's also been musical, video games, breakfast cereal, and a rather controversial live show at Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights. So there you have it, it's just two movies and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, including a third movie that's about to come out, hopefully. Um, and the timeline, eh, it 
sort of makes sense, except for that whole, you know, time travels at the same rate in the present thing, which doesn't make any sense. But other than that, it fairly makes sense, I guess, if you want to call it that. Um, I really enjoy these movies. I love Bill and Ted. I'm looking forward to the third movie, even if it's bad, I'm going to enjoy it. Um, and I hope you guys will as well, too. Um, it, this is one that I don't know why I have such a special love for these movies, but I just do. They're a lot of fun. Uh, if you haven't seen Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure or Bogus Journey, you should go out and check them both now. They're both great movies with great soundtracks and uh, have fun. I mean, they're not great movies. Don't, don't expect that you're going to see, like, great cinema. They're just dumb fun. Um, but that's about it for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope you enjoyed me sitting out here in this heat because it's really freaking hot. I got to get to my car right now and get some air conditioning. Um, I hope the sound is working on this one. It might be a little bit iffy. I guess we'll find out. Uh, let me know down below what you thought of it. Like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Um, and uh, I will see you very shortly for another great video. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.